All right, so some of you might remember my recent review of the Zowie XL2546K, a 240Hz eSports monitor with probably the best motion clarity that you'll find on any gaming monitor today. And this right here is the little brother, the 144Hz Zowie XL2411K, which you can get for less than half the price, around 230 US dollars. And after my extremely positive review of the XL2546K, the 240Hz model, which I've been using as my daily driver ever since, I'm really wondering how much of that goodness is packed into this budget 144Hz model? And the answer is quite a lot. I think this is an excellent choice for competitive FPS, but there are a lot more compromises at this lower price. So let's take a look. Now kicking things off on a good note first, all of the insanely good ergonomics from the flagship Zowie XL2546K apply here too because as far as I can see they use the exact same stand. So really no matter what your ideal position is for gaming, low and tilted or maybe something higher up, you'll find something that fits really well with the XL2411K. And I believe this to be a really underrated topic of discussion because surprisingly there are a lot of budget 144Hz monitors out there which have the worst stands in existence and some of them, believe it or not, have zero height adjustability. So in my opinion, that's definitely one of the leading topic of discussions here when it comes to the XL2411K versus some of its competitors. It makes the monitor truly feel like a peripheral meant for human use with varying levels of posture, height, and just general preference. Although I'm not giving BenQ any passes on those ultra chunky bezels, which really frame up that 24 inch panel in a really ugly way. Although it doesn't impact the gameplay, I think we can agree that thinner bezels just look so much better. Now, although 240Hz monitors are becoming a lot more accessible for the mainstream market, which is really great, there is still a pretty big price difference between a 144Hz monitor like this and a decent 240Hz monitor. And for those wondering, yes, there is a noticeable difference between those two refresh rates, especially for someone like me who has kind of played at those refresh rates for a very long time. But if, for example, you're coming from a 60Hz panel, 144Hz is going to feel absolutely incredible to you. Motion clarity is significantly smoother and game inputs feel like they're almost happening in real time. In fact, when discussing the compromises of the XL2411K, refresh rate and the speed of this monitor is probably the last thing that I'd complain about. I think this is one of the fastest budget 144Hz displays that you can currently buy. So what are the compromises then? Well, we can start with the lack of any adaptive sync technology. That means no free sync or G-Sync support. And that's really weird to be saying even for a budget gaming monitor these days. I think we can agree Adaptive sync is becoming a pretty standard feature across the board, but the XL2411K doesn't have it, which means that you won't be getting the benefit of complete synced frames all the way up to 144Hz. But how bad actually is the lack of adaptive sync here? I mean, if you're playing games like CSGO, Valorant, Overwatch, really any game that plays above 144FPS so easily like those games do, then you're not getting the benefits of adaptive sync anyway. I'll also mention that above 144Hz, screen tearing is really, really minimal because the time differences between each frame there, granted that you are delivering well above 144 FPS, the differences between each frame are really hard to see. However, if you're planning on playing much harder to run games at a more mellow 70 to 80 FPS, for example, it's not a good experience at all. At this frame rate, screen tearing is definitely noticeable because the time interval between each frame is larger, and so you're left with a fairly choppy experience. Basically, if you're planning on buying the XL2411K, make sure that all of the games that you're playing can be run at around 144Hz, otherwise the screen tearing will be very noticeable. But now let's talk about DIAC, which is BenQ's implementation of backlight strobing, a really useful technique to reduce motion blur. If you've seen my review of the 240Hz XL2546K, you probably remember how much I was blown away by this. So if the budget 144Hz variant has any of the same tech packed into it, it might just be an automatic win as the best budget esports display. Now when we take a look at the moving UFO test with DIAC off, the news isn't that good at all. There's a fair amount of smearing with the overdrive setting turned off, and then with both high and premium, we get some really noticeable overshoot. So really for a TN panel, this is looking below average without DIAC enabled. But when we do switch it on, it gets a lot more interesting. The entire UFO is significantly clearer now when in motion, and this translates directly when it comes to gaming as well. However, there are definitely some trade-offs here with each setting. Overdrive off results in a pretty noticeable 
noticeable double image, premium results in some pretty nasty overshoot, and so setting both Diac and Overdrive to high looks like the best setting overall to use. Ideally, we'd be able to use a pixel overdrive setting between off and high, as off results in a double image and high is just a little bit too aggressive. And oddly enough, that is something that we can actually do by accessing the monitor's service menu. Just boot up the monitor while holding the directional joystick, press the joystick once, once it's booted up, and then you'll be able to customize the pixel overdrive gain with a bit more fine tuning. For example, setting it to eight gives us a really solid and clear result. Obviously still not perfect, but the artifacting is improved significantly. Full credit here goes to channel Techless for showing how to do this in the first place with their video and review. It does help us achieve the optimal result here for motion clarity. Now there is also a Diac premium setting just as with the XL2546K, but this lowers the monitor brightness way too low to be usable in my opinion. Setting the Diac mode to high also lowers the monitor brightness, but it's still totally usable in my opinion at a max of around 191 nits. Although if you game in a super bright room, you might also find that a bit too dim as well. So really in terms of speed and precision, I don't think you can get better than the XL2411K at 144 Hz. Motion clarity does look seriously, seriously good here when it's tuned correctly. And honestly, not too far off the much more expensive 240 Hz XL2546K. But if there is a major factor separating them and a major downfall of this monitor, it's definitely the colors. And I think the best way to put it is that this panel just looks really flat. With a bit of calibration, setting the RGB values to the following, you can get it looking okay. Colors generally look how they're meant to, but after gaming on IPS panels and even the TN XL2546K, this panel just felt really flat and lifeless in comparison. Now it's not the end of the world when it comes to gaming, since you can ramp up the color vibrance pretty easily easily through the OSD, but you can only push it so far before different colors start to merge together and the image starts to really fall apart. Think of it like ramping up the contrast and saturation on an already compressed image. That's kind of what you get here. But ramping up the vibrance on the 240 Hz on the other hand is a lot more effective, where you can basically get the panel glowing with color, super vibrant and great for competitive shooters. And yes, a more vibrant color accurate panel does definitely help with competitive shooters as well. So the colors in general vibrant of the panel are definitely the fallback here, but for what it's worth, here are the settings that I'd recommend using. So with all of that in mind, who should buy the XL2411K? I mean, is it even worth considering in the first place if the colors are so bad? Because you can get IPS 144Hz monitors at a very similar price, maybe even a little bit cheaper, and then you do have a more vibrant panel, which is better for other things as well. And so I think if you spend a lot of time at your setup, watching content online, getting a bit of work done, and you're just looking for a decently fast budget 144Hz display, this is not it. Because really, doing anything other than playing esports titles here makes it feel really aged and dull. Now I will actually have a head-to-head -head comparison with this and a few other budget 144Hz monitors out there coming soon, so do subscribe if you want to see that. For now, I'll say that the XL2411K seems like a good option if you're building a dedicated budget esports gaming setup. If you're someone, for example, who does all of your work and media consumption on a laptop or a different setup, and your gaming setup setup is just where you grind out competitive first person shooters, this does actually seem like a pretty good option for that. Speed and motion clarity wise, this is probably the best 144Hz option out there when Diac is switched on, but there are obvious compromises. So definitely stay tuned for that comparison coming out soon. I think it's going to be a case of how much you're willing to trade off the motion clarity and speed here for the vibrancy and just general better day-to-day -day use of an IPS panel. So as always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.